Are you just saying it or do you really trust him this morning? See, because if you don't trust him, that means your trust is in something else. And if your trust is in something else, that means there's a curse upon you. But if you trust in the Lord this morning, the Bible says that you are blessed. And so as we turn to Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 8, coming from the NIV version, it says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert. In a salt land where no one lives. Verse 7, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. I'll say that again. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries. Someone say no worries. In a year of drought. And it never fails to bear fruit. Just for a few moments this morning, I want to speak from the title, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. This morning I want to tell you about two different type of trust. First trust is a noun. This trust is a testamentary trust. Some of you may know it as a trust fund. A lot of us may not know what the trust fund is because none of us are trust fund babies. None of us was born with a silver spoon in our mouth. But see, a trust fund is a three-party relationship that includes a truster or a settler that transfers property or money or something of value to the second party for the benefit of the third party. And the transfer of these benefits to the beneficiary happens upon the death of the settler. Back up and get them, Cam. See, it's a three-party relationship, just like the relationship between the father, the son, and mankind. And see, one reason that there are trust funds is for the protection of the beneficiaries against their own inability to handle the property or the money. See, and the truster or the settler is Jesus. And what happens is Jesus has something that we do not have. And that is a perfect life fulfilling the law of God. God would be the second person in this relationship. Mankind would be the third person. See, because upon the death of Christ, upon the cross at Calvary, he transferred something to God that was then transferred to us. You should get happy right there. See, because we have an inability to handle this thing called sin, and it was for our benefit that we may have a relationship with Christ. I am, but they ain't saying nothing. So let's talk about the verb trust. 
A verb is an action word. And it says that to trust is to believe in the reliability, the truth, the ability, or the strength of someone or something. So now that we know what trust is, as a verb, let's see how it applies to us through the text this morning. Starting off with verse 5, it says, this is what the Lord says. You can shout all right there because we know that when God says something, we can stand on it. When God says something, it's not a maybe or a might be. Because God said in Genesis, let there be, and then there was. God said, let there be, and things started happening. In the New Testament, God spoke and told Lazarus to come forth when he had been dead as a doorknob, but Lazarus came forth. So when God says something, we know that it is true and that it will come to pass. And so God says here, to the people of Judah, in the context of him passing judgment upon the people for their sins, for the people trusting in stuff. The beginning of chapter 17 will set the backdrop and it'll let you know that God is angered with his people. He is angered with his people because his people have turned their hearts from him and started trusting in the things that were around them. Started trusting in their own strength because God had gave them victory here and now, and now again against the enemies of God. Then he started blessing the people. And they turned away from God and started trusting in the blessings. And you'll see in the backdrop that God says he will give everything, their wealth, and even their heritage, away to the enemies. This is prophecy saying that the people of Judah were going to captivity in the Babylon. And when God says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. And we do know that the people of Judah and the Israelites did go into captivity into Babylon. And God says this is... Cursed is the one who trusts in man. A curse in the Bible is a loss of anything and everything significant. All the milk that God gave the people, lost. All that honey that God gave the people, lost. Can't trust in what looks good, because you'll be cursed and lose it. Can't trust in what tastes good, because you'll lose it. Curse is the one who trusts in man and who draws their strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from them. You can't trust in tall, dark, and handsome. Tall, dark, and handsome will walk out on you. Can't trust in thick, long hair and real fine Coca-Cola bottle shape. Because you can crush the bottle and the pop goes flat. Come on, I, 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 I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Can't trust in your car because your car will leave you broke down on the side of the road. Can't trust in friends who said they'll be there for you, but they're only there for you when it's convenient for them. Men will turn their back on you. To your face, they'll tell you that they're on your side, but when they get with somebody else, they send their gossiping about you. You done confided in somebody and told them your deepest, darkest secrets, and you just go around and find out that people in the church are telling other people your deepest, darkest secrets. So then when you walk in the church, the smile and the handshake that you get is just a mask. Because in their hearts, they looking, they, they looking at you with their nose turned up. Yeah. Who they think they is? Singing for the Lord. And they did that. 
who they think they is holding the offering tray, and they don't pay their tithe. But uh, Reverend Williams said it yesterday at the men's thing. When I point one finger at you, it's three pointing back at me. Somebody better praise God this morning because I'm preaching the word. I don't know if there's anybody here who came to trust the Lord and be blessed. But if you're not trusting in the Lord and you're trusting in everything else, you're cursed. Wonder why it's more going out than more coming in. Wonder why you can't get sleep at night. Because all you do is take sleeping medicine, and it don't even work. Wondering why your emotions are up and down, because you're relying on your spouse, or you're relying on your kids, or you're relying on your job to give you the stability and peace that God has promised that comes from him. See, because God is the source, and all those other things is just the resource and we cannot get what we need in this life if we skip the source and go straight to the resource. You'll be like a bush. A bush in the wasteland. See, if you study the area of the Bible, you will know that it, it, it's a desert area. And so a lot of the metaphors and illustrations painted, like this one right here, is taking in the context of the area and the culture. And so a bush in the desert has to rely on rain. No rain, you become parched what the Bible says. No rain, no prosperity. It's what the Bible says. So trusting in man, trusting in stuff, trusting in yourself will leave you in a dry place. Is there anybody dry this morning? Are there dry places in your life? Are there areas that are not as wet as other areas in your life. You're good on the job. But when you get home, it's dry. Good at home, but when you go out to go get a loan to start that small business, it's all dry in the loan office. It's all dry. It maybe it's because you're trusting in something other than God. And God allows us to dwell in these dry places just to bring us to a place where he is. Tasha Cobb sings the song, I want to be where you are. See, we all want to be at the most happening spot. When you go downtown on the weekend, you want to go to the place that got the best music. You want to go to the place that got the best drinks. Come on, talk back to me. Talk back to me. Maybe you don't do it now, but it's not that you wouldn't, it's just that you can't. Come on. Don't play with me. You go to the strip club. You want to go to the strip club that got the best looking women. They got the biggest poles. See, but the Bible says God didn't like the, the poles. Look at verse 2 and 17. Even their children remember their altars and Asherah poles. Yeah, I'm all in the Bible. I'm all in the text. And so what is your dry area? What's your thirsty area? Can I make it plain for some of the younger people? 
What's your thirst trap? Hmm. What's your thirst trap? See, God searches the heart, and he knows your heart. But the enemy also knows what your thirst trap is. See, you could put me in a room full of crack cocaine this high. I am not thirsty in the room with crack cocaine. Okay? I'm not thirsty in the crack cocaine room. I will not tell you, so you can judge me, what room I get thirsty in. That's the talk for me and my pastor and CJ. See, but the enemy will set thirst traps. He knows how you like it. He knows how you like to smell it. He knows your taste buds. And he'll set thirst traps. And you just continue to be thirsty. See, because we can never be satisfied by finding our own hydration. Mm, that's good. We have to be hydrated by the one who comes living water. See, Christ met a woman by the well, and, 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 and he told her, hey, hold me a drink. Hold me a drink, baby girl. I'm parched. Been walking. All this dust kicking up as I walk. My toenails is dirty from these flip-flops. Dust in my eye. I just want to sit down. And I'm just too tired to even turn the faucet on myself. Can you give me a drink? Long story short, he tells her, hey, if you knew who I was, you would be asking me for a drink. See, this woman had one man, but not just one, two, not just two, three, not just three, four. Not just four, five, not just five, not just six. She got to number seven, and that wasn't even her husband. No, six wasn't her husband, my bad. Seven was Christ, the perfect number. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Got all these bodies, and ain't even got no body. Mm, mm. Got all these associates. But no true friends. All this tradition, but no relationship. All this money, but no peace. And so we have to be hydrated by God to get out of the dry place. I'm a little parched right now. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Remember, trust is believing in the reliability, the truth, the ability, or the strength of someone or something. Sean asked us last week, what are you focused on? But, Sean, I want the people to know that you cannot focus on what you do not trust. You cannot focus on what you do not trust. Because what you trust in, that will get your focus. So if you're trusting in everything but God, then your focus will be on everything but God. Y'all understand this stuff. Good Lord. And whose confidence is in him. And we can have confidence in God because we know that he is the truth. 
we can have confidence in God because he has the ability to do something about any and everything. We know that we can have strength in God even when we're weak because the Bible says at our weakest and at our lowest, his strength is made perfect. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. So the cursed person would be like that little bush in the middle of the desert, waiting on the rain, waiting on the rain. And when the drought comes, it's tripping. It's scared. It's anxious. It's worrying. It's parched. But see, those who trust in the Lord, they'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. Anytime a tree is planted by the water, the tree does not have to wait on the rain to come. Anytime a tree is planted by the water, it has no worries in a year of drought. And when a tree is planted by the water, it will never fail to bear fruit. Are you a tree planted by the water this morning? Where it looks like the stock market is going down, but you never fail to bear fruit. Where it looks like layoffs are coming, but yet you never fail to bear fruit. When it looked like wages are being cut, and you still never fail to bear fruit. See, because those other things are just resources. But when you're a tree planted by the water, your roots go out to the source. How many people's roots are reaching out to God this morning? Where are your roots? I'm not talking about the boat in the movie with Kunta. Roots. Not talking about that 10 series VHS. Take you four or five days to watch the roots. Not talking about going on Ancestry.com and finding out that your bloodline is from Wakanda. Or Zamunda. Me, I'm half Wakanda and half Zamunda. But are your roots in the kingdom of heaven? Are your roots in the kingdom of God? And see, because if your roots are in the kingdom of God, you don't have to worry about what you'll eat. You don't have to worry about what you drink. You don't have to worry about what you're going to wear. See, because your Father in heaven already knows that you need these things. And the Bible says, don't worry, but seek first the kingdom, and then all these other things will be added to you. You don't have to go looking for these things. Look for the kingdom, and they'll be added to you. You don't have to go create these things. Just seek the kingdom, and it'll be added to you. That's what the Bible says. It's in Matthew. If you didn't tear it out, go, go and read it. That's your homework. The Bible also says, don't be anxious in nothing. See, we become anxious and anxiety overtakes us when we're not rooted to the source. Minds become uneasy when our roots are not rooted to the source. And we lose the benefits of being connected to God. A lamp does you no good if it is unplugged from the source of power. 
Your phone does you no good if it is not plugged up to the charger and your battery is on 2%. Boy, some of y'all got some 2% batteries this morning. You didn't plug it in last night. You didn't say your prayers last night. You didn't thank God for life this morning. You got to put it on that uh, energy saver. And you walk around wondering why you're always tired. I got 10 hours of sleep last night. I'm still tired. Not connected to the source. It seems like the light just isn't shining. The bulb is screwed in. But the lamp's not plugged in to the source. And then, if you are a tree planted by the water, you have no fear when heat comes. See, when God says something, he means it. And the Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear but of power, love, and of sound mind. Did not give us a spirit of fear. So don't be scared. Don't be scared to step out on faith and enroll back in school just because you're 60. Don't be afraid to leave this career because you've been working in this career for 15 years when God is telling you to go another way. Don't be afraid to step on, on, on faith when your kids continue to act up and, and, and cause a muck in your home. When God says, if you bring them up in the instruction of the Lord, if they depart, then they'll find their way back. Let them go. Let them go. I made my kids laugh. I was on the phone with somebody talking about, we were talking about kids. I said, I don't trust none of them. I don't trust your niece. I don't trust none of them. This whole year, I ain't trusting my kids. My kids and did stuff that shocked me. Me being their daddy. Them having my last name. Them living in my house. Eating my food. Playing my PlayStation. Using my YouTube that I pay that did that monthly thing on. Boy, they'll do something that'll just shock you. I was like, man, you know what this year, my New Year's resolution is? I ain't trusting nobody, especially these kids. See, because kids will smile in your face, call you daddy, tell you you're the best daddy in the world. Ooh-wee. And boy, at about 7.30 to 3.30, Monday through Friday, you wouldn't know who they was. Let me down. I'm in, I, I work in school suspension. I'm getting calls from the in school suspension from another school. He don't even call now. He put the kids on the phone. They got to call. <laughs> Hello? I'm um, daddy. True story, true story. I'm um, daddy. I'm in Mr. McGee's room. You, you in the wrong room. You are not where you're supposed to be. You're in the desert. You're supposed to be the tree, planted by the water with your roots. Get, get, searching out. You want to be this shrub in the middle of the desert with my last name. <laughs> the sub kicked me out. What did you do, son? Um, my friends, mm -mm. your friends ain't got my last name. Your friends don't play my PlayStation. Uh, uh, what did you do? I was playing. Mmm. Mmm. This morning before we left, I said, what a LeBron. Y'all said smart and successful. 
I said, who do we represent? Y'all said Jesus. But you got there, and you wasn't acting smart and successful, and you wasn't representing Jesus. You turned your heart from me. You did what the flesh wanted to do. See, but I stand here to tell you I forgive you and I love you because that's what a father does. And if you're a little bush in the middle of the desert because of sin, God is standing here saying, I want you to become a tree planted by the water. And I stand right here to forgive you. And I want to put you in a place to where you always bear fruit. So before I take my seat, I want to tell you this story. There was this young man in high school in his senior year. Good kid. Goes to church with his grandmother. And the year's coming to the end, and the school has a tradition with the seniors to where they TP the whole school. They TP the school. All week, grandmama been telling him, you should participate in that TPing. I'm going to get you if you go out and TP. See, because you can get in trouble for TPing. All right, Grandma. You know I'm a good kid. You know you raised me right. I'm going to do whatever you say. But got that text message from Ray Ray saying, hey, put your black on. About 1030, we coming to pick you up. About to go TP. He puts his black on. Uncle Anthony he puts on the Charlie Brown. Leave no fingerprints. Gets his mask. So they can't tell who it is. Put some paint like on dead presidents. So you don't know the race. They get to the school. Oh. Oh. TPN. Having so much fun. TPN. TPN. Having so much fun. School looked crazy by about 11.30. TPN. See, I never TP. <laughs> TP. TP. Long story short, get called police, got to bring him home. Grandma says, I want you to go get my Bible and just look through it, the whole Bible, anywhere, look through it. Comes to one scripture that says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. And right next to that scripture was wrote TP. Got to the scripture where it says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. And next to that scripture was wrote TP. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. TP. Through the Bible, TP, TP, TP. And so he goes to his grandma and be like, Grandma, why in multiple pages in your Bible, there's the words TP. When you read it, did you throw toilet paper around and get happy? Grandma said, nah, boy. Anywhere you see TP in my Bible, it means 
trusted and proven. You can play some music right there. I'm going to start bouncing and do my thing. Grandma, see, I thought TPN was just throwing the toilet paper around. But what she says is, boy, have you not been paying attention that you can take the Bible and you TP the Bible? Grandma, what do you mean when you TP God's word? Says God said something, I trusted him, and he proved it to be right. <laughs> when I was at my lowest point, and I cried out to God <laughs> and said, God, hear my cry. <laughs> I'm weak, <laughs> but I know you're strong. <laughs> TP. <laughs> God, I'm losing sleep at night, but your bird says, I will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. TP in the Bible. Is there anybody here who doesn't want to throw TP, but you want to write TP? Is there anybody here that you don't want to just write TP, but you want to live TP? Is there anybody here who's feeling like a brush in the middle of the desert? Your leaves are withering. You're feeling thirsty. You're feeling parched. But you want to become the tree by the water where your roots reach to the kingdom. Your roots go to the source. And you can test. And then you can trust. And you can try the word of God. And then God will prove that his word is true. There's one more thing that has been tried, trusted, and proved. God said that the seed of a woman would come down from heaven to earth. He said that that seed of a woman would act as a truster just like in a trust fund. He said that seed of the woman would die on the old rugged cross and upon the death of that seed of the woman something will be passed to that third party and we are the third party because on the cross Jesus was hung high, stretched wide. He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. They took him down, placed him in Joseph's tomb, but he had to get up because the tomb wasn't for him. And bright early on the third day morning, he got up, and all power of heaven and earth was placed in his hand. Any type of power that you're looking for, any type of power that you're trusting God for this morning, it's already in his hand. And when we accept Christ, when we trust Christ, when we believe in him in our hearts, when we confess him with our mouth, we receive the inheritance. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? I'll trust you, Lord. As the choir comes, sing that song again.